Hello, this is Ray Flanagan, uh, starting something new here today on on the, my Sweet Potato Ray page on Facebook. I've been whole food plant-based for a couple of years now, and uh, I've been following this uh, person online for the last couple of years. Her name is Sherry Goodman Graham. She has a, a Facebook page called Plant-Based Lifestyles, and welcome to our first ever recording, Sherry. This is Ray. How are you? Hi, Ray. Great. great. I'm doing great. How are you? Not too bad for an old timer. It's a beautiful fall day in Connecticut, and I believe you're down there in Arkansas. Yes, beautiful. So I think for, for your people and my people, I've got some followers. You've got a whole lot uh, more on yours, Sherry. You've been in it a long time. Um, tell us a bit, little bit about your story in, uh, in nutrition and having been out there in California and what you were doing out there and how you transitioned to Arkansas. Oh, that's a great question. Well, I've been a dietitian, you know, by standard American terms for about 30 years. And for myself, it was mostly vegetarian food, which the vegetarian diet, as you know, includes eggs and cheese. I mean, who doesn't like eggs and cheese? But I found out my cholesterol had hit a skyrocketing level. That was just, you know, something that had to be done like in two seconds I had to make a decision Well, I looked really healthy and fit and I was exercising on the inside my body wasn't so healthy because my cholesterol was so high when the doctor said you have to go on a statin which I'm not a favor of any kind of medications because I believe as you know the food can really heal your body I made the decision right there I need to do some research I need to find out what I can do to go vegan or whole food plant-based because there's also a lot of unhealthy vegans you know what I'm saying Correct. so plant-based means that you're eating the whole foods the whole plant like instead of uh, oils and saturated fats you're eating the whole plant like the whole avocado or the whole walnut walnut anyways so that transitioned me within seconds i actually picked up the book the starch solution are you familiar with dr mcdougall i love dr mcdougall <laughs> wasn't he wonderful yeah, i read yeah. that book and i was like oh my gosh he it, that book is an easy read it was a quick read it was a quick transition so once i started eating healthy plant-based whole food meals Within 30 days, I went back and had my cholesterol tested, and it started to drop. Yep. And then after about six months now, it's within low range, real healthy range. And I feel, you know, blessed that I happen to find this way of eating to, um, you know, not only survive not having to take medications, but overall I feel so much better getting rid of that dairy and the, and the eggs because I was already not eating meat for years. But there's so much inflammation, I realized, in eggs and dairy that I feel so much better eating a whole food plant-based diet. And after that transition, I decided now I have to turn other people on to my passion once I found this way of eating. So I only want to work with people and clients who want to go on a whole food plant-based uh, diet and make it a lifestyle. You know what I'm saying? Yep. So, uh, Sherry, on, the, on the Dr. McDougal, I think we've been raised to fear the potato. Right. And, and even the sweet potato. And that's what my my, <laughs> my my page is sweet potato ray. And I, I've I felt for a long time it's not the potato. It might be the French fry potato. But again, it's still not the potato. Uh, and it's and, and what do people put on a potato? They put swabs of butter, sour cream, artificial bacon bits. And, you know, and, and then they think that's OK. And it's really not OK. But just a regular potato. If you're boiling a potato or boiling or, or roasting a sweet potato, you're perfectly fine, but covering them with all kinds of butter and everything else, that's when we get into trouble. I agree with you. I love your name, Sweet Potato Ray. <laughs> and it, it's so it's so clever because um, there's so many antioxidants in the sweet potato. And I even think a lot of people are afraid of the white potato. Yeah. They think, okay, they've heard sweet potato because it's, you know, the orange flavor, The I mean, the orange color and has a delicious flavor. But you're right. The white potato is, is has so many other nutritional value is you know different than the sweet potato they each add something different so it's good to eat both and i, I agree it's like people are afraid to eat the potato because people have that yeah. carb phobia is what i call it and you know the french fry you know the the fast food french fry they, they've claimed for years that mcdonald's dips those french fries in a sugary oil that's that's not only salted like crazy 
but sugared up like crazy. So they, they, they addict you to those skinny little French fries and people oh, think yeah. they can eat them like crazy. And it's very hard, just like the Lay's potato chip. Uh, bet you can't eat just one. I mean, they're, you know, we're swarmed with advertising and marketing that tells you that it's okay to eat these things. I'm glad you brought that up because I was um, at the beauty shop getting my hair done and my hairdresser said to me, um, she was opening up a bag of ruffly Lay's potato chips and said, would you like some? And, and, and there's no way in my life now would I ever even entertain it, nor do I crave it because I think you're right. The oil is addiction. But she said, but what do you mean? It's potato. It's healthy, isn't it? I had to explain to her that, no, like you said, it's fried in oil. And I said, look at the back of the, of the, of the package and read your nutritionals. And if there is more than three to five ingredients, when you can hardly spell the ingredients and you try, try to read them, you know it can't be healthy for your body. Yeah, paragraph full. Paragraph full for a potato chip, right? <laughs> right. Right. It's it's very sad. So so then so you made you switch right away in your nutrition coaching. Then that's a really good point for me. Yeah. That's my personality. Mm -hmm. I do everything all or nothing, and so it was really easy for me to make that switch. Um, I just I just realized that dairy was really addictive for me. It wasn't an easy switch, but once I got off the dairy, it was so much easier. I was one of those people that put half and half in their coffee every morning, and I loved eggs fried scrambled you know any way you could eat an egg and the more the research the more that you look into um, what eggs and milk do uh, for inflammation and for your gut you just want to not eat it anymore it's really easy for me to let it go so I could feel the full benefits plus I had the scare of the cholesterol so you know when you have a scare you're unfortunately people get to that scare and then that's what makes them do the transition and so for me, it was a, it was, a, but there's, it, not everybody has a different personality and how they want to work it. Some people need to slowly let go, which is just as well in the long run, as long as we're all not eating dairy or eggs or animal products. Yep. So growing up, uh, Sherry, what about in your family? What, what kind of food did your mom cook and, and, uh, did they make you eat everything on your plate? Like my family did. <laughs> we can talk a little yeah. about that, um, Yeah. you know? I don't know. Were you a fit, fit young woman at uh, you know high school age and things? Did you play sports or what were you into? That's a good question. I love it. Yeah, the, I was a gymnast, ah. so um, I worked out quite a bit. And so um, my diet was horrible. My mom is from Arkansas. That's how I ended up here in Arkansas. And the Southern cooking is just you know fried, fried, fried. Yeah. And plus, the American diet was like you know apple ju apple jacks or some kind of cereal with a, a glass of juice. And I think because I was so active, um, you know, I did I was never overweight. But the insides, if I had been testing my cholesterol as a young mm -hmm. child, which I do think children should have those tested at an early age, just so they can have a wake up call, you could see, you know what I mean? I'm sure the inside, the cholesterol had been building over the years. And that by the time, you know, I was in my middle 40s when I got that reading, my cholesterol was so high, but you know, you can't see it on the outside always. So mm -hmm. yeah, I was active, which helped, I think. But mm -hmm. the food was horrible in my, my upbringing. It was a typical American diet yep. so I'm one of six kids my my father was in frozen food so when I'm a little kid my father's uh, his specialty was pot pies and TV dinners he would work for bird's eye frozen foods now even though we we also had tons of frozen vegetables peas and string beans and all kinds of frozen vegetables which I think today even you know if you can't get fresh there's nothing wrong with frozen plain vegetables but you know broccoli and cheese sauce in a, in a bag is not the greatest idea but certainly frozen broccoli is fine um, my mom was a great cook. You know, she was German, so we did the German dumplings and all that kind of stuff. Uh, great, lots of gravies and pot roast and spetzel and all that stuff. But also, my mom, uh, when she first came from from this country into New York, she she was friends with some Italians, so lots of lasagnas and managots and all those kind of things. She she made a great fried chicken, but you know, back in those days, they would bread the chicken pieces. And use Crisco. They they fried them in deep Crisco Crisco oil. Um, so that's what we you know, again. But we were active. Um, I was a very thin kid growing up. I had some growth spurts where I'd get a little heavier and then stretch out. And you know, by the time I was in high school, I was a six foot one thirty five, pretty much skinny guy playing soccer and very very active. And we could eat just about whatever we want. And I I couldn't put on weight when I when I played college soccer. I think I went off to college at 145, maybe 150, 
and a week of hard training in a national powerhouse at Hartwick College in, in Oneonta, New York, um, I was down to my regular 145. And maybe by senior year, I was up to 155. But I was trying. I mean, we would go to the cafeteria and, and eat two plates of food, all kinds of milk and soda and desserts and stuff, just trying to put on weight because we were working so hard. But, of course, once you get out of college and you're maybe playing Sunday league ball like I was and you start drink, <laughs> drinking more beer and eating more junk, uh -huh. all of a sudden I found my weight getting up into the 175, 180. And I'm thinking that's very heavy for me because I was a kid who was 145 in high school. Now I'm, now I'm thinking 175 and 180 is big. Uh, but that reality is that people, we are told that you know you can expect to gain 10 pounds every 10 years right so that by the time you're 50 or if you're 50 60 pounds overweight that's normal that's what we do but it's not what we need to do you know so so all of a sudden then the norm gets to to go up so instead of being you know six feet 145 which i was at 135 145 i was very thin but when i i'm thin shouldered kind of small frame when i get up to 180 I, that's very heavy for me but I've seen myself go up. I think I tipped 200 at times over the years between the beer drinking and the eating and then the lack of activity. So when you stop playing soccer and doing the things that were keeping me thin, uh, then all of a sudden you see the weight go up. And then, and then I think people also get to a point, and I'm sure you find this in your, in your uh, coaching, that people think they get too old to get fit again. And, oh, absolutely. <laughs> so when, or that we're in midlife yeah. and we have to have that midlife look or yeah. that midlife feel. Yeah. I mean, let's go talk about that right yeah. now. I mean, I'm at my high school weight. No. I weigh what I weighed. I, I, I'm not afraid to talk about my weight because I'm proud that I can get on the scale and I'm not afraid of it. It wasn't always my friend. And a lot of women have have issues with the scales that scale that's tied around it. And I'm very sensitive to the issue. But I'm at my high school weight. I'm like 121. I'm like five, five and a half, yep. and I don't have to work out as hard because my food is so clean. Do you know yep. what I'm saying? Yep. Yeah, it's it's. Uh, my wife always says to me, I, I don't understand how you don't get heavy because you you eat more than I've ever seen you eat, and it's true. Right. <laughs> I eat a it's ton. It's true. You know, but all good nutritional stuff. That's the funnest part about eating a whole food plant based diet is you're never hungry. You're eating these, you know, these foods that are low in calorie but high in density and high in density means high in fiber, yeah. which I ha read a statistic that 97 percent of the population is fiber deficient, yeah. that when you're eating animal animal foods when you break it down when you think about it you're getting protein fat and maybe a little bit of b12 but you're not getting any of the other vitamins or minerals and you're getting all the saturated fat and no fiber yeah. so the typical american diet is to put slab down a piece of animal protein whether it's chicken or beef or fish and then put a little bit of vegetables and no starch yeah. and as you know as we were talking again the potato the starch is so low in calories, high in fiber, and loaded with nutrition, keeps you full, gives you energy, and you feel great. And, you know, in the summertime like this up here in Connecticut, you know, we have great Connecticut corn and uh, New Jersey corn, New York State corn. And, again, yeah. co corn is another one that gets a bad name. Of course, of course, you got the corn oil. But the corn on the cob, you know, again, they have, I've seen, how many times have you seen people that take their corn on the cob and they roll it in the, in the stick of butter and then they throw the salt on it till the salt is like, you know, all over the corn on the cob. Well, now I, I steam the corn now and just eat natural corn with nothing on it and it's absolutely delicious. Nothing like a fresh ear. Yeah. Oh, I agree with you. I think as we eat plant-based, whole food plant-based, our palates change because when I eat a potato, like a Yukon Gold, I taste the, like it has butter on it. Mm -hmm. I don't need to add butter. The same with the corn. I agree with you. I love the taste of um, fruits and vegetables. Yeah. They're like nature's candy. It's so um, tasty once you let go of all the other foods that are blocking you from having a real taste bud. Yeah. So let's talk a little bit about, you You mentioned that you used to have half and half in your coffee. My wife and I used to have 1% uh, milk in our coffee. And I think when you start to, uh, you know, one of the things I discovered early on uh, myself is starting to read the labels and understanding uh, the, the grams of, of sugar in a teaspoon. I think that, you know, we don't measure any, you know, all my life they've been telling us we're going to switch to the metric system and we never did, right? So we don't measure... Um, grams of sugar going into a cup of coffee. We measure teaspoons. So people sometimes they'll put one teaspoon or one, 
one sweet and low or a Splenda or some kind of artificial sweetener in. But I say, you know, once you understand that four grams of sugar is one teaspoon, I, I remember when I made the switch, I was eating Klondike bars. You know, I loved my ice cream. And a Klondike bar, you know, when you look at the calories, when calories are in the hundreds and grams of sugar are in the, you know, double digits, 23 grams, well, that can't be too much until you do the math and you realize you're getting six sugars in one Klondike <laughs> bar. And they make that Klondike bar just a little too small for my appetite. So I would have two of them at seven o'clock at night. And all of a sudden I've sneaked up to 194 pounds. So they mm -hmm. put sugar. When you talk about milk in your coffee, when I, when I took a look at my wife's cholesterol and, and she, had, she had been eating yogurt, you know, uh, pl uh, plain, no fat yogurt, thinking that that's mm -hmm. okay. And then I looked mm -hmm. on the, the sugar content of the yogurt and it was like, you know, either like four teaspoons of yogurt in a, in a, a sugar in a cup or something like that. But in the milk, in the 1% milk, what we don't realize is when they pull that fat out of there, they're adding sugar because they're putting sugar in the milk. Um, mm -hmm. To make you come back and drink that milk. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I, the, they have it all planned to make it addictive. Yeah. Dairy is so addictive. Yeah. And it's just by the nature of the the composition of milk. It has some properties in it that are so addictive that it's really hard to let go of cheese and yeah. dairy. I think people struggle with that almost more, if not with that more than meat. Yeah. What do you what has been your experience? Well, you know, in, in the dairy, I, you know, I thought when I first made the switch that I was never going to be able to drink coffee without some kind of a creamer in there, you know, so I, I could use the plant-based milks, which that's what we drink. We drink uh, flax milk, uh, the good karma flax milk. But I realized, you know, before I even knew about the plant-based milks, I said, you know, I've never tried to drink coffee black and I don't drink a ton, but I do like a cup of coffee or a cup of tea and I don't put anything in there. But I tried and I realized that after a couple of days, that I was off the cream, uh, any, any kind of, even a 1% milk that just drinking a coffee black. So I do start my day off with a cup of coffee. I don't know what your thoughts are on coffee, but, um, you know, the sugar, I, I think one of the things they talk about in the whole food plant base is SOS that a lot of, a lot of times you hear that added on the end about the sugar, oil, and salts. And I think that's where the, the country, this country has got to, you know, my father, my father, God bless him. You know, it was the cigarettes that got to him. It got to my brother and my little sister as well. Um, but the cigarettes, the cigarette industry was busted years ago for pushing cigarettes on people and false advertising and all that marketing and things. And they took them out of the magazines and off TV. Um, but, <clears throat> but even still now they're, they're pushing vaping and things and they're still allowed to sell cigarettes. I think that someday that my, my dream would be to see the sugar industry get busted like the, like the tobacco industry did because they're just Wouldn't. addicting everybody. That would be my dream too. And when I think about it, I think what's the what is one of the first things we do for our one year old baby? We buy them a cake. Yeah. And we celebrate and I think it's really great. But that's when they go from eating their little first piece of chocolate cake to making faces when it's time to give them your vegetables. The yeah. taste buds start yeah. to go off at yeah. a very young age. Yeah. So, you know, that's what I love about working, you know, with with young mothers who have children yeah. because that's the one regret I had is I raised my daughter more on the vegetarian, but now I'm finding out that I see a lot of sick vegetarians. I even see a lot of sick vegans who aren't eating healthy vegan. That's why I love the term whole food plant-based. It's the healthiest, cleanest, cleanest option. So my one regret is that I didn't know more of this sooner and was able to raise my daughter a healthy whole food plant on a hook or even been pregnant and eating this way. Uh, my pregnancy wasn't that, that, you know, I mean, I ate a lot of eggs and dairy and um, yeah, it's so it's possible too to get off the addiction. Yeah. Like you said, just going, you have to go through a little bit of missing it. But when you add in the fresh fruits, they taste so good after you get off the sugar. That's such a great transition. Yeah. And the other thing I wanted to say, what you mentioned about the sugar, a lot of people think, oh, it's it's the white sugar or the brown sugar, whatever sugar is in that thing and when you're in your container, in your box or whatever you're baking. But let's talk about the white flour that turns to sugar. Mm. That's also so addictive, like the, the white flour tortillas and even some of the breads. They say whole, whole wheat, but it's not 
whole grain or whole grain wheat bread. So that can be so addictive too. So you think I'm not eating any sugar. Why am I not feeling better? Why am I not losing weight? Or why is my diabetes or other health issues that you're having? Why aren't they changing? Well, you have to look at the white flour as well. And that's why I like the whole food plant based because it's whole grain, which I want to just say the sprouted grain. Do you eat Ezekiel toast, that sprouted that's, grain that's bread? That's my favorite. I do the cinnamon raisin Ezekiel and even the cinnamon raisin Ezekiel uh, muffins, you know, the cinnamon raisin muffins, like an English muffin type. Um, yeah, I, I, I love my Ezekiel bread and I, I eat it with um, uh, my own homemade peanut butter. And of course, if you look at peanut butter, you know, how many kids, you know, we've been eating peanut butter and jelly since we were little kids. It's one of the most economical meals, right? But, you know, if you had real peanut butter instead of the fake peanut butter, all the the mass produced stuff that's out there with all the preservatives and added sugars and oils and salts and everything else. um, And then look at the jams. I mean, there's nothing better than a, a blueberry or a raspberry or a strawberry, but, you know. When I do my peanut butter and jelly now, it ain't jelly. It's it's either sliced strawberries, blueberries, bananas. I eat, I should be swinging from the trees by the by the number of bananas <laughs> I eat. Me you know, too. I love my bananas. I I never go a day without having three or four bananas. I'll bet you. You know. Um, I love that you brought up bananas because today in my um, plant based lifestyle uh, Facebook group, that's what yeah. I I posted. You'll have yeah, to check it out. I, I posted all the benefits of a banana. There's just there's there must have been ten benefits yeah. of eating bananas. I think that's another one that a lot of my clients come to me and say, "What we can eat banana? They're so again so carb phobe, yeah. afraid to eat the sugar. Oh, the sugar that's in the banana. I find it so interesting. They'll skip bananas over all these years because they're too high in sugar or too many carbs then they'll be sneaking cookies or eating you know little candy treats but they won't have the banana so it's real interesting when you let go of the sugar and bananas have a lot of starch when you eat a banana that's more on the green side that's got a lot of starch in it so that's going to keep you full and keep your blood sugar balanced so sherry i'd love to tell you a little bit about my history and maybe for your listeners as well Um, I've posted some stuff on your page and you've been a great support to me over the last few years, but I'll go back to, you know, when I was a kid, as I said, growing up, I was very thin. Um, you know, I had, my father was, uh, was thin in high school and college, but then he flew during the war. He was a pilot on the B-17 in World War II. They got him smoking during the war. And I guess they saw some things that nobody should have had to see him in World War II. And he started drinking in World War II. So we were, we were an Irish family, a, a heavy drinking party family. Um, I was not an early drinker. I, uh, my, my brother, who was a little bit older than me, started drinking at an early age and started smoking. And, and um, my brother and I were, were very great uh, friends and brothers, but we were totally different in, in the way, things we did. My brother was stealing cigarettes from my father when he was 10, and I was listening to my father coughing his lungs out when I was like 12 years old, and he was only in his 40s. And I made a commitment to myself. I said, I wouldn't smoke one of those things for a million dollars, you know, even though they were telling us, well, there's no proof that cigarettes are causing these things, you know. Um, But my brother started smoking. Uh, By the time he was in middle school, he was a heavy smoker and smoked right through high school and college. My little sister started smoking at an early age and kids like to emulate their parents. So in the family, we had three smokers and three non-smokers of the kids. And and the three that, that smoked, they smoked heavily. And everyone pretty much drank uh, and once they got into the adult age. I started later because I was a, an athlete and I, I, I didn't drink during my playing days in college. And I played for a team that went to the NCAA Final Four in 1971 or 1970, season of 70. <laughs> so I was very fit coming out of there. And then as I got a little bit older, I started drinking more beer and, and less working out and started gaining weight. But I gained and lost of several times. I could, I could do that. You know, I could knock off 25 or 30. But I always went back to what I did before. And that's, you know, people say, how do you do it? You know, I did it by stopping the drinking, stopping some of the junk foods and stuff like that. But usually at the end, once I met my goal weight, you started doing it again. And uh, so I I did a little yo-yoing, but I was always more of a thin person than than someone that really battled weight. But in uh, 2008, um, I have a little sister, had a little sister, Kathleen that had uh, alcohol and drug problems for many years. She had depression problems. She was diabetic. She had, you know, all kinds of issues, bipolar, you know. And in the end, uh, she she passed away of a drug, o- a drug and alcohol thing, but really a drug overdose, a cocaine overdose. 
And uh, when I cleaned out her room in 2008, she had a little tiny little apartment in Norwalk, Connecticut. I cleaned out this room. I cried all the way home, 45 minutes. And I said to myself, you know what? I'm done with the drinking. And I, I quit drinking that day. And I haven't had a drink in 12 years. So, you know, going from a guy who was drinking four or five beers pretty much every single day, even though they were light beers, uh, most people said to me, you know, Ray, I didn't think you had a drinking problem. And I said, well, you might not have thought so. But, you know, when it hit me, I, I really felt that I was drinking too much. So, in, in, you know, a little tribute to my sister, I said, if it could take anything positive away from her death, that I, that I would stop the drinking. And I've done that successfully for the last 12 years. Well, a few years ago, my brother John, who was very close to me, <clears throat> he got sick with uh, lung cancer. And even though he had quit smoking uh, 12 years prior, he had a spot on his lung and uh, they said they were gonna do a minor surgery, which turned out to be a major surgery and uh, wound up with a stage four lung cancer and some issues with his lymph nodes. Um, so he, they, they didn't have a great prognosis. They put him on the chemo and they were, you know, keeping a look at it, but he, he really looked terrible. Uh, have, was having a real hard time with the chemotherapy. And then uh, in that year of battling the lung cancer, he was also diabetic. And, and even though for years he was on insulin for diabetic doing a shot, um, he continued to drink and he was still drinking his Tanqueray and tonics while, while on insulin. So he never really addressed the diabetes thing, never changed his diet. He always carried an extra 20, 25, 30 pounds. A very successful guy, made tons of money, had a very successful business, had 100 employees at one time in a business in Connecticut. He was a great guy, world champion boat racer, you know, a skier, you know, did everything. You know, he was a great, great guy, but he didn't take care of himself. So in the end, he, he, uh, he developed an infection in his big toe, his left big toe, and it became gangrene. So the doctors amputated his uh, left big toe, and I remember going to see him, and uh, you know they kind of left the wound open after the surgery, trying to get this infection out of there. And oh my God, it was it was awful to see. And then uh, three weeks later, they couldn't get rid of the infection; it was spreading in his foot, so they amputated his left uh, leg below the knee. So now he was on you know uh, amputation and on oxygen, on chemo for the lung cancer, and he had they had concerns of his heart because he had already had a heart attack and a stent, and again the prognosis was terrible. He had a basket full of, of pills that he was taking for the chemo. He was talking to me about chemo brain, and it was at that time when I I visited him. He was he lived he was an hour away from me, and he was talking about moving to South Carolina that I came home one day and my wife had gone to her family beach house in New York and I was home alone and I turned on Netflix and I, uh, I found Forks Over Knives and I watched Forks Over Knives. I was so depressed after seeing my brother and I knew it wasn't gonna end well that I started watching this movie and I watched it from start to finish. And you know, I, I, when I, I have a, I'm blessed with a great memory, I watched it and as soon as it was over, Netflix tells you since you watch this, watch this. And I think I watched What the Health. Then I watched Cowspiracy. <laughs> then I watched Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead. And I, you know, all of them. And uh, you know, so I, I must have watched five of them the first day that I got home after seeing my brother. And the next morning, I made the switch. And uh, you know, I, I think I posted something on my um, on my Facebook page just before making the switch that I was going to try to lose 20 pounds. And I was I was 194 at the time, and I was trying to get to 175, thinking that 175 would be my normal weight. And it nearly, really never was, you know. But it, it was my accepted normal weight. So I made the switch and uh, I started with breakfast. I went from, you know, I loved my eggs as well. On a Sunday morning, I would have a three egg omelet with cheese and, and probably some ham and stuff like that in there and maybe a bagel with cream cheese on the side. So I made a total switch. I bought the steel cut oats and I bought blueberries. I bought bananas. I bought um, apples, cinnamon. And uh, I started making steel cut oats in the morning. That was my first switch. And I'm telling you, when you use a quarter cup of steel cut oats and then add this fruit to it, I wind up with a bowl of steel cut oats and my wife would look at this and say, oh my God, how are you going to eat all that? And it really does take me, I'll bet you it takes me a half an hour to consume my steel cut oat breakfast. So I'm full, I'm not starving. Um, you know, I think what, what they stress in the whole food plant-based lifestyle, and that's why I love that you call it lifestyle instead of diet. There's not a diet. There's not a diet out there that works. There's a million dollar, uh, millions of dollars worth of books and programs, and all, none of these diets work. Um, a lifestyle is the change, and that's what I did when I stopped drinking and when I stopped eating junk. When my brother passed away, my brother finally passed away, and 
you know, I, I made a commitment to myself that I was going to learn more about this and that I was going to try to help some people. And I felt if I could help even one person, I would be doing my brother justice. And uh, so that's what I did. And that's when I discovered your page a couple of years ago. So I thank you for being a friend and, and, and all the information that you've helped me with over the last couple of years. How long have you been eating whole food plant-based? I think it's three years now. It was August uh, three years ago when, when I made the switch. Yeah. So, and you've lost more than the 20 pounds? <laughs> yeah, well, I, uh, I went all the way down to, I think I was into the 150s, and, and now my weight has kind of sneaked back up from like about a 157 or 8 to 160, 161, 2. That's, so I'm very stable at 160, 161, or 2, and that's, I think that is a great weight for me. Um, I could probably get a little bit fitter and I might drop a couple, you know, but, uh, people think I look very thin and they don't realize that I, as a kid growing up, I was much thinner than I, than I am now yet, you know? So I was probably another 15, 20 pounds less as a high school kid, but I don't want to go back to being a little stick figure that I was at those times. Right. Right. Yeah. I think doing ha just the, the story that you shared, the story that you have, you have so much experience and a worth of knowledge to be able to help other people and anybody that would have the opportunity to work with you with your with, with your experience and everything that you know would be a blessing i mean that's what's so wonderful is that you want to share you want to pass it on you're passionate about it you want to you know engage other people in this way of living and i love that about you and Sherry, you know, I've had friends, so you ought to write a book. You ought to do that. I don't, I don't think I need to write a book because the books are there. You know, you talk about mm -hmm. Dr. McDougall. I'm a, fo a huge follower of Dr. Campbell, Dr. McGregor, Dr. Esselstyn. I mean, there's a slew of them out there. And they've already done the books. They've done the research. And, and uh, you know, to me, I think the most important thing about the whole food plant-based is if you learn what the truth really is, and I think it is the truth, uh, and Dr. Gregor, all his stuff is, uh, is you know, clinically tried and, and, you know, huge numbers of people that they study. Um, whereas, you know, Dr. Atkins and stuff, some of these things, there are no studies on this thing. Everyone scares the hell out of people on the carbs. Uh, and, and it's, you know, uh, you know, what the famous line is, where do you get your protein? It's like, how many times do you have to answer that question? And, and the whole protein myth that's out there that we've been fed uh, and how many zillions of dollars are made on protein shakes and protein bars and protein this and that when they're loaded with sugar too, you know? Mm -hmm. so. And let's talk about the, the, the truth too is like they're using the word the coronavirus is a pandemic and it is. However, so is diabetes. Yes, diabetes is. is a pandemic. There's yeah. more people dying every year yeah. than that are dying of the coronavirus and it's like swept under the carpet. Yeah. I mean, and that can be changed and be reversed. That's what's so inspiring about when you give up the sugar and you give up the fat, they're finding out more and more that it's actually the saturated fat. Yeah. You can reverse diabetes. You can get off your medication and you can stop and prevent what happened to your brother yeah. simply by making a lifestyle change. And I know it's not always easy. I think you and I share in that we really are motivated internally to have wellness and health and not everybody's able to have the same philosophy or that eases the mm -hmm. transition. Yeah. But that's what you and I are here for, to mm -hmm. help you make it easy and joyous. And, and, you know, I like to use the word, turn you on to a different way. Yep. And if you just open up your mind and give it a try after just a couple of weeks, everybody says, oh my gosh, I yep. wish I had started this earlier. Yep. That's what I hear. Yep. How about you? Well, Sherry, you know, uh, so I started this little page thinking, you know, I'll see if I can help somebody out. And, and uh, lo and behold, a, a very good friend of mine came into my shop one, one day. And I had had his daughter, had I have a frame shop in Bethel, Connecticut. His daughter had worked for me, and his daughter just uh, had a child up in uh, on the Cape Cod. And uh, my friend had gone up to see his daughter, and the daughter said to her dad, she says, you know, Daddy, I hope you'll be able to teach my son how to ride a bicycle someday. And my friend came to my shop with tears in his eyes and said, you know, Ray, I don't think I'm going to be here. I said, what are you talking about? He says, you know, I'm on blood pressure meds, cholesterol meds. I've got, uh, I'm on blood thinners. Um, I've got, I wear a CPAP machine to bed every night. And uh, he says, I just don't think by the time this little boy is three, four, five years old that I'm going to be here. He was, he was 70 years old. Now, he and I used to ride bicycles together, but his weight had gone up to 300 pounds. He was a, a, a big guy, 6'3", in high school, 175-pound high jumper, a good high school athlete, big guy. 
and he had gotten up to 300 pounds. He, he gave up the beer and wine and things and went from 300 to 280. So he came to me at 280 and he says, Ray, are you still doing that vegetarian thing? I said, no, actually, Rolf, I've never been vegetarian. I'm whole food plant-based. And he said, what the heck is that? And I handed him the Forks Over Knives book and I told him, watch this on, on Netflix. And, and I told him, I said, I do the Netflix diet. You know? So I, I <laughs> baptized my diet, the Netflix diet. So I said, do what I did. I said, Ralph, watch Forks Over Knives, What the Health, Cal Spears. He get educated, buy the book. He bought the book. He bought the recipe book. And he, he and his wife were all in from day one. Uh, because he was scared. And I think when you're scared, it's a whole lot easier. You know, a lot of people yeah. learn to live with that extra weight and think it's okay. But, you know, he was riding. He, he has two daughters that love to ride bicycles, and he couldn't keep up with them anymore. And he was a good athlete. He knew that if he was fit, he could. So he went, uh, Sherry, amazingly. And in, in, um, I started, you know, working with him and basically got him the info. And he would call me and we'd talk, you know. But it wasn't so much of a regular thing. But, again, he was all in. And uh, he went from 280, so actually starting at 300, I quit drinking, was at 280, he's down at, at uh, two, 218, so he's 62 pounds down um, from when we first started talking. And he is riding a bicycle, his, his daughters can't keep up with him, he's off the CPAP, he went back to his heart doctor, the heart doctor says, oh my God, he says, you, you, have, no, you have no symptoms he says, really? Yeah, you know, and that's what I told him. He, he asked me, you know, uh, when he made the switch, you know, what do I need to do? I said, well, you know, Ralph, when I made the switch, I was not on any pills. But you should, you know, keep an eye on your blood pressure and those things because if you're on medications to reduce those things, you've you got to be careful. So I would, I would tell anyone they should get a physical. They should see what their, their numbers are. But he went back into his heart doctor, and the guy said, you know, uh, you know I'll take you off this, but I'm not going to take you off this. And he was on a blood thinner. And he says, so, so what are you talking about? You're saying I have no symptoms and you want to keep me on medications. And the guy says, well, I can't take you off that. He says, well, I'm off it. And so he's, mm. been, he's been off the medic. Yeah, he took himself wow. off. I mean, the blood thinner. I mean, he, he says, you know, if I cut myself, I don't want to bleed out, you know. So, but mm -hmm. a lot of the pharmaceuticals, they don't, they don't ever want it. You know, that's the whole idea. When they get you on insulin, they don't want to tell you to eat your broccoli. They want to tell you to take that shot of insulin. You mm -hmm. know, they don't want to tell you to stop eating the ice creams and all that other stuff. Just take this. You know, take mm -hmm. this blood pressure med or cholesterol med or statins and, you know, all, you know, all these things that they're out there. You know, I know when I go to my doctor, the guy says, so what medications are on? And I said, zero. You know, I take I take broccoli. I said, I got to watch the side effects, you know. <laughs> you, know, you know, that's what I talk about, uh, Sherry, is the side effects of going whole food plant based. And there's many, aren't there? Many side effects. <laughs> You're going to feel uh -huh. better. You're going to look younger. Your gonna, skin is going to get better. You're going to think sharper. You're probably going to get down to your ideal weight at some. So there's a, there's a long list of side effects from going whole food plant-based. Well, it makes me think about when you take a pill, and, and most people are on some kind of pill, what it does to your gut biome. And mm -hmm. we're always talking about the gut is in the health. The, the health is in the gut. And yeah. when your gut is healthy, then your brain is healthy. Yeah. But if you don't have a clear gut and you're taking some kind of medication, one kind of, med, uh, you know, some kind of pill, you're just risking of destroying your gut biome. And then later they're saying later in life, you don't have memory, you don't have, you know, we prolong life. You can, you can live to be maybe in your late 80s and uh, 90s, but what's the quality of your life? So we're living long, but I would rather have this quality of life and not be on any medications and use yep. food. Like food is our medicine. Yep. Food is what we want to eat so in order to be healthy. And I love that you said, like, there's so much information out there. Those doctors that you mentioned, those are the pioneers. Those are the doctors that don't believe in medications without first trying the food. And so we should all like you said, knowledge is powerful, but applied knowledge is the most powerful. A lot of us know out there, they know what they need to be doing, but they're not doing it. They yeah. know what they need to do. So, you've, And that's, I think, where I come in and maybe yourself, but we can help. And that's my passion is I would rather do the one-on-one -on -one coaching than writing a, writing a cookbook or, or yeah. doing a pot, you know, doing yeah. something that I love just working with people one-on-one -on -one and helping them to make a lifestyle change because I get to see all the rewards like you did with your friend. Yeah. I see it. I've helped hundreds of people change their life. And it's so rewarding on this side to know that people are thanking me for actually saving their life. Yeah. 
And some, you know, uh, Sherry, I was also a high school soccer coach. I coached two years girls soccer and then five years boys. We were state champions uh, with the boys team. My last three years, we went 56, one and five. So I, I know what I'm doing. I know what I'm doing as a coach uh, with soccer. And I thought, you know, if I could apply the same type, type of things that I learned, you know, to me, coaching is about taking the knowledge that you have about this particular thing, which is whole food, plant-based living, and making it easier for those people to transition and, and coach them along the way. They don't have to put in all the work that you did, but the, the deal is to give them a shortcut. The deal is to make it happen sooner than if they were trying to learn all this stuff on their own. You know, when I was a kid growing up playing soccer, we had no videos. We had no parents that had played or brothers that had played. We were trying to learn all this stuff on our own. And it took a whole lot longer than if I had somebody show me how to do it properly. So that's what I felt as a coach that I can help people because I've done my homework. I've read the books. I've watched the movies and I can help these guys. So some people, you know, like myself who had two terrible things happen in, the, in my life that I lost a little sister and I lost a brother that I, I didn't need the inspiration. It was already there. I, I knew I had to make a change in, in their name. But some people, it's not so easy. You know, they're living in a family where, you know, obesity, you might have a, a husband and wife who are both way overweight and kids that are following the same kind of diet that they are. So you have a whole family. So if, if, if one person in the family is trying to make a switch, it's, it's very hard for the rest of them or to, to, to do it while the rest are still continuing. You, know, you got people going to the store that are buying one thing for themselves and, and something else for the rest of the kids and the, and the spouse. And that's too bad. So I think I think they all need this. They all need to get the education. And, and I think it starts, as you said, with kids. You know, right now I got little kids living next to me. I, I've put in a garden two years ago. I started a vegetable garden. Had never done any gardening, and I've got a great garden. And we're we're still uh, got eggplants and and uh, kale and and lettuces and things that are still even up north in October producing. And next door to me, we have a new family next door that also put in a garden. And here's a a young gal next door with two little kids. One one of them's like four, and the little girl is in first grade. She's I guess six. And these little guys are out there picking vegetables and coming over to my fence and saying, look at this, Ray, look at this string bean. You know, you want one? You know, and, and if you give the kids a chance to eat healthy, they'll love it. Plus, they're getting to watch it grow. It's magic. It's absolute yeah. magic. You know? I love that story. I love that visual. I do. Yep. I can just see the children really, they love to see things grow. And then they love to feel like they were part of it. And that's going to encourage them to eat it. Yeah. And it's just giving them those options. You know, it's just as soon as possible to not bring that stuff in the house. It's one thing if you're going to take your... Take, take the family out in the old fashioned way. It's not something that I believe, but it's way better than bringing the ice cream in the house, but going out, at least it's not in the house. It's a treat every once in a while, not something that you have in the house that it's in the freezer. It's so easy to go to. So the shame to me is, Sherry, that when these children go to school, you know, you got McDonald's Mondays and Pizza Hut Tuesdays and all this kind of stuff. Oh, so, I know. So for a kid to choose an apple when they're putting all this junk out in front of them, it's very tough because the kid's on their own at school. It's not like, mm -hmm. you know, mommy's there to make sure that the kid eats what he And, of course, all your friends mm -hmm. are eating all the junk, so you're probably going to eat the junk at school. Mm -hmm. um, I think they've finally taken a lot of the soda machines out of the schools. Um, but you know, Sherry, it's one of the things I talk about. If, if you and I went out to lunch one day and I ordered an iced tea, an unsweetened, just a regular tea with a lemon and you sat down and had yourself a nice snapple made from the most, from the best things on earth. I think it says on the snapple bottle and, and you sat there and I took the sugar bowl and put 12 sugars in my iced tea. I think you would probably reach across the table and slap me in the face and say, "Ray, what the heck are you doing? You just put twelve, <laughs> you just put twelve sugars in your tea." And I could say, "Hey, Sherry, you're drinking a Snapple. You got the same amount in yours. I mean, you know, some of these sodas and things, you know, fifty-five grams of sugar in a sixteen-ounce bottle. I mean, come mm -hmm. on. So, you know, mm -hmm. but they hide it in those things. Imagine Snapple putting on the label, made from the best things on earth. Really, right, right. Oh." So false advertising, yeah. false advertising. And that's the battle. I go to the local supermarket and in, in early August, what do you see in early August in a supermarket? Halloween candy. I don't know about mm -hmm. in Arkansas, but Halloween has always been on October 31st. And do we really need to put that stuff out in front of people at every single corner of the grocery store, every checkout mm -hmm. counter at eye level for little kids, you know, but mm -hmm. that's what's there.
Well, and that may be the silver lining of COVID. Maybe there there won't be as much Halloween, but that yeah. doesn't mean once it's in the store, they'll have it in the bowls in the house anyways. Yeah. It's it's addictive. It's a traditional holiday. And yeah. we could we could talk the next time if you'd like about the holidays since yeah. Thanksgiving's coming up. Yeah. We could we could talk about how to get through the holidays if you'd like. I really have enjoyed talking with you. Yeah. Yeah, so uh so tell me, Sherry, how did you how um, do people contact you? You have a you have a website, I believe, correct? Yeah. The the easiest way to contact me is to go to my website, Sherry S H E R I Goodmangram.com. And there's a button that you can just push on for a complimentary um, consultation with me that I just love to talk with you, answer any questions, um, hopefully light up your uh light up your mind in some way that might make you see how you could actually do this, you know, how actually you can make this change with a little bit of help. So yeah, visit my website, my story's there. There's, I also have plant-based lifestyle on Facebook and I do have an Instagram Sherry plant-based yeah. dietitian. So any of those places you can find me and reach out to me. I'd be happy to chat, yeah. to chat. Thanks for, and, and, and you have your sweet, sweet potato, potato Ray. Ray. And, and you know, Sherry, uh, a year ago at this time, uh, early October, I think it was October 7th was my high school reunion. I'm class of 1969 and I will be uh -huh. 69 in another year. And, and, uh, one of the, I was on the reunion committee. I was the, uh, uh entertainment chairman and, uh, provided the music and some videos and things. And I went down there and, and very sad at my reunion that in a class of, of 625, a pretty good sized class, and I was most humorous in my senior class, um, there was uh, a wall of all the classmates we've lost, and, and they, they, they found about 70, almost 70 out of that class that are already gone before their 50th reunion, you know, and, and, uh, and that's just the ones that they found. There's other ones that, and of course, since the reunion, we've lost several classmates. Um, so, um, uh, one of the, the blessings that for me is that, uh, one of the gals that I remember from, uh, uh, high school, we'd go down to these committee meetings and when we'd have these meetings, it was not all about what are we going to do at the meeting? It was about what do you guys want to eat? And I remember, I remember going down there that, you know, it was either pizzas or, uh, all kinds of stuff. It was all junk. And, uh, my old high school girlfriend who was up for homecoming queen, she was bringing a little thing of watermelon. She brought a, you know, cubed watermelon in a, in a, in a, a Tupperware thing or something. And I was bringing my own salad and I'm saying, guys, what are we worrying about the food for? Let's worry about what we want to accomplish in the meeting. But for them, it was all about the meeting was all about the food and the drink and this and that, you know? So one of the gals on the committee meeting says, oh my God, Ray, you look great. What have you been doing? I said, well, you know, I switched to whole food plant-based and this gal made the switch. She had, she had cholesterol issues and she's been a follower my page and i think i probably passed her on to your page um but you know i i do refer people to your page all the time because i found of the stuff that's out there it's quality and i think if people get the education it'll make their journey a whole lot easier so you oh, know well, I, I appreciate you ray i really yeah. do i, I it's great to have um, like-mindedness and it's so much fun talking to you yeah. because we could talk for hours yeah. and about this because we're both on, on the same page and that's what's nice about being in my plant-based uh, lifestyle group uh, is that you're with like-minded people and you just yeah. feel good when you're with like-minded people. It just inspires you to to share what you know. And, and I'm still a learner too. That's my yeah. MO is I love to learn. I'm always trying to learn more. Yeah. And so I think thank you so much. Yeah, and I think, Sherry, that uh, as I say, some people might benefit like I do um, just from looking at your page and, and you know, it's all, that's all free information. Other people might need the coaching. They might need someone to talk to more about it. And that's, that's a great that you can provide that. Uh, and I don't Thank think they you. can find somebody better, but you know, Sherry, as you say, there's a lot we can talk about and I'm looking forward to doing another, a few of these with you. Um, it's been a pleasure. Uh, and again, the effect you've had on my life in the last three years is immeasurable. And, and I appreciate that so much. Oh, you're so welcome. Thanks for calling. It was great talking to you. All right, Sherry. Talk to you again soon. Uh, uh -huh. So on behalf of uh, Sherry Goodman Graham and the Plant-Based Lifestyle page and a and website and Ray at Sweet Potato Ray on Facebook, we're signing off. Thanks so much.